When I started out painting miniatures about two years ago, my painting setup was quite rudimentary. Every time I would paint, I would put forth my precious bottles of paint, brushes and homemade wet palette, set everything up on the kitchen table, refreshingly innocent. After some time, I started making videos for YouTube and thus complicating things. Not only do tripods and cameras take up a lot of space, because of the videos, I took a bit of a deep dive into the hobby. Well, more of a stumble, really, landing flat on my face in a puddle of materials, techniques, miniatures, and a newfound desire to experiment. Experimentation that did not only constantly kindle the hobby fire, the subsequent refuse, the, the, the ashes, if you may, was a lot of hobby stuff. Transforming a neat, orderly cupboard into some kind of disorderly living beast that spawned from one cupboard into the other, into a nearby drawer, into a secret hideaway behind a closet, finally choking out its last remains into a third and hopefully final cupboard. I kept at it though, setting up larger and larger temporary workstations for painting, spending countless hours on rigging tripods and countless hours on figuring out where to hide said tripods once the filming was done. Almost two years later, things were getting kind of unbearable. My hobby time was suffering from disorganization and vengeful tripod setups. So I finally got a designated hobby workspace in the living room. Wonderful stuff. I could set up a permanent spot for my light and camera, and things were looking fun and efficient. Only the beast of disorder, uh, rather than being banished to some Christmas decoration box in the basement, did the complete opposite and leveled up to demonic status. The demon's finest owned skill was now the awesome power of paint disorder. I had reached a limit, it seemed. Enough bottles of paint and the scales tip. From knowing exactly where every paint is to the demon magically teleporting the paints around while you're searching. I spent as much time looking for Vallejo Buff as some do for Atlantis. Life is funny. I would not have thought two years ago that I would be spending most of my hobby time just trying to find the right bottle of paint. Lacking the wizardry skills required to banish the demon of disorder, I thought I would build a paint rack instead. And maybe label stuff. Our hobby, and probably a lot of other hobbies too, are, the way I see it, equations of time, space, uh, money, personality and dreams. Every individual's situation and needs are different. Equally, this very human thing, dreaming, dreaming of the next step forward, is utterly individual. Sometimes it's a step that is realizable, and sometimes it's a step that perhaps is sweeter in dream form. Whenever the situation and whatever the dream, it's good to have a look at the time spent on the hobby, and if that time is spent well for us as individual hobbyists. Oh, and with a bit of consulting time with any other human or pet surrounding you, your spice might actually not enjoy listening to an airbrush compressor at four in the morning, and maybe your cat actually does need some stray minis around the house to eat. You know, just saying. For me, all I wanted to do was paint, but spend too much time fighting a demon. I wanted to film, but setting everything up every single time not only took time away from painting, but also took time away from creating the films I wanted to create. Deciding to focus on improving all the areas that have been stealing time, so to speak, has very much improved my hobby experience and existence, and more time to do what I'm actually in the hobby for. Now, obviously, this is not only applicable to making your own or buying ready-made paint racks, cleaning up your hobby space or even deciding to build your very own hobby shed in the backyard. Uh, might spawn a really, really large demon though. Uh, anyway, it can be well worth applying these thoughts to the entire hobby to find what works best and is most enjoyable for you. I was asked recently by an individual new to the hobby what paints I would recommend as the first paints to buy when starting out from scratch. 
trying to quietly swallow my own immediate response, which was all of them, uh, followed by looking over my shoulder, hoping there would stand a professional painter there that had magically been summoned by the now confused disorder demon as the result of a miscast spell of paint rack destruction, whom I could ask for some actual serious knowledge-based information. While thinking these uh, strange thoughts, I was looking up at all my paints. And then realized what they are there for. Paints really inspire me. When I go into a game store, the first thing I'm drawn to is actually not the minis, it's the paint racks. Looking at colors is where the process of how I want to paint a mini or a squad or an army starts. Looking at different colors and tones next to each other gets my mind going. I I might leave the game store empty-handed. Well, okay, that was just an outright lie. I might have gotten some tufts and some green stuff and a new army. But what I'm trying to say is that when I'm about to start painting a mini, working out the story of what I'm going to paint, all these different paints are fueling my imagination. Sort of like a jigsaw puzzle. I still have to figure out and spend time on laying the puzzle, but at least all the pieces are there in front of me or available at my local friendly game store. Am I saying all this just to validate all the paints I've got? Perhaps. But for me personally, this is what works. I don't use color wheels. I respect them immensely, and I'm kind of jealous of people who can utilize their hidden powers. But this is, this is my way. And I'm not saying this because I want you to go buy lots of paint, but because it's the root of the thoughts that I'm trying to get across. You don't need all the paints, but if it's something that inspires, then that inspiration can be something to consider worth more than just a pigment-rich medium that is used to smear color on miniatures. If buying a lot of different brushes or another box of miniatures or a 3D printer or whatever gets you inspired, go ahead and consider it for actually being worth more than the mere tool that it is. As long as, at the end of it, it gets you motivated and does not result in you spending less time on what you enjoy doing. So, for all of you that are by now wondering, is there going to be some more sort of practical information? Something a bit less, wish I was a guru floating around painting minis while levitating in mid-air, quote-unquote, kind of stuff? Well, let's start with what paints... I recommended to someone starting out from scratch. I recommended getting paints that you will actually use. The paints you need for the color scheme that you want to paint. This is what I did for my first minis. There to me does not seem to be all that big a point in getting lots of bottles of paint right at the start. The more you paint, the more you will discover what colors you like and what brands of paint you like. No need in deciding all that on one day. Apart from the paint, there are obviously a few other things that we use, or would like to use, or buy. But getting into details on brushes and type of paint, favorite airbrush, stuff like that is maybe something more suited for other forums. But something I would like to get into shortly is light. Because regardless of what our hobby situation is like, I've still not stumbled upon anyone that likes to paint miniatures in the dark. Lights can be a tricky thing, or a not-so-tricky thing. I use a photo lamp that I also use when filming. Other stuff around the house. When I was at the kitchen table, when I started out, I used a cheap sort of desk lamp that my son now uses to enhance his Lego building experience. The most important and easiest to fix, I'd say, now that the times of LED lights are upon us, is to use a daylight temperature light source. Human beings have been dictating their lives after daylight for a lot longer than the age of electricity has been around. And our minis are no different. You'll see the colors better in a daylight temperature. Also, your eyes will appreciate the experience and thank you accordingly. If this means buying a new bulb, it's well worth it. After that, lights can get as complicated as you like. But regardless of how many, How bright? How soft? What size? What angle? Because of the fact that we work under the same light for longer periods of time, our eyes adjust. 
So what I like to do is to take my Mini away from where I've been painting and look at it in other light sources. Looking at it by a window, under a lamp in the kitchen, on your gaming table. Changing environment will most probably make you see things that you did not see while painting. All in all, I'm really pleased with my new hobby space and having a bit of order around was just what I needed. I've made sure though to not scare the demon away completely, making sure there is a comfy draw still around that it can call its domain, because it was actually rather helpful, in a demonic kind of a way, giving me a bit of a reminder that things were starting to spiral a bit out of control, and that actually trying to understand what it is that inspires me was in the end a lot more satisfying than buying another set of paints. <laughs>